Welcome everybody. I'm Jana Mori with the student with the Santa Barbara City College Career Center. I am the student program advisor here today. And I'd like to welcome you to the Career Pathways panel, Health Information Technology and Career Information Management, AKA HIT slash CIM. You like all those letters? This career has a lot of letters. So it's otherwise known as HIT CIM. If you meet anybody who's in the industry, they've got you know, usually like a whole line of letters after their name for all the certificates that they have acquired over the years. Today, we're going to have a brief overview of academic programs. I'll be moderating a panel with questions with our panelists who will be sharing about their education and career path. Our panelists, I'll do a formal introduction, but today you can see them. Uh, their, their videos are on right now. Christina Underhill, Sylvie White, and Nancy Anderson. And um, I would like to also introduce Guire Schuyler. She's an academic counselor. If you have any questions about this particular career path and you want to know which classes to take, which programs would work for you the best, then Guire would be an excellent source of information. As well as Val Yerman. And Val is a career counselor in the uh, Career Center. We are colleagues and hang out together a lot on these types of events. And she is, uh, this is her area of expertise in the Career Center. We also have Christina McGuire, whose picture is not on, but she's our internship coordinator. And uh, we three make a, a nice team. She's got the thumbs up right now on her screen. Hi, Sylvie. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> okay, so Let's see here. Oh, I want to introduce our the department chair of HIT and CIM because she's going to be talking about what academic programs are available at Santa Barbara City College. And I'm hoping, Shauna, that you'll talk a little bit about the crossover between HIT and CIM. We're still all learning. For those of you here today, if you're confused, you're not the only one. And I think sometimes even people in industry might be a little confused sometimes too. But <laughs> although I think our experts here will allay and, and reduce a lot of that, uh, uh, maybe you know what the job titles are called and things like that, because sometimes it could be a little bit vague. But anyway, we have Shauna Sweeney and Shauna, take it away. All right, hello everybody. I recognize a lot of names of my students, so. I saw a few faces as they were joining. I won't take up a ton of your time. Um, I'm always available for questions. So you can contact me at any point. I don't want to take away from our panelists too much. But if you haven't already, if you go on our website, which is sbcc.edu slash HIT, you can actually find out all of our different degree or certificate options. You can do some research and dig down a little bit there. You will see an overlap as as mentioned, between a lot of the programs and certificate, a lot of the classes apply to multiple different certificates and degrees. So we have an HIT, which is Health Information Technology, and that is an associate degree. We also have a medical coding specialist, a certificate program. We have a healthcare data analytics certificate program. And we have cancer information management that as an option of a certificate or an associate degree. So all of, all of our programs lead to help you prepare for national credentialing exams through AHIMA or the NCRA, the National Cancer Registry Association. So that's lots of information we could do an entire hour on just those. So please visit the website, look at the credentials, I also encourage you to, if you have not already gone on the AHIMA career map website, you can play with it. It's an interactive tool and um, CIM is part of that as well. That website is myMY.ahima.org slash career map. So please check that out if you haven't already. And as I said, I'm available for questions. Squire, our counselor, is fabulous. If you need help with planning your classes, your class load, absolutely anything, 
she is there and she is wonderful and will help you with absolutely anything. So um, like I said, I don't want to take up too much time from our panelists, but I am available at any time for questions. If you, if you start to explore some of these different options and have questions, I'm happy to help. Thanks, Shauna. What does AHIMA stand for? It stands for the American Health Information Management Association. Awesome. And then could you put that uh, link in the chat, please? I we, sure can. I will put our department page and oh, the career map. Thank you. And um, Val and Guire and Christina, if you all want to put your emails in the chat too, that would be great. We're going to have a long chat because I also would like each of you students, if you have questions, to please place them in the chat. Okay, with that, I would like to go ahead and introduce our panelists. Our panelists will start with Nancy Anderson. Nancy has over 30 years of experience in health information management. We are honored to have her, her here today. She has a Master of Science in Health Information Management and she's a registered Health Information Administrator or an RHIA. She has a number of certificates including a Certified Code Specialist and also in Healthcare Compliance. She's a member of the American Health Information Association, which is AHIMA, uh, Board of Directors. I'm curious to hear about that today, Nancy. And has been highly involved in the California and North Coast Health Information Associations. And lastly, she's a member of the Healthcare Compliance Association. She's currently the Director of Revenue Management Compliance, Risk Adjustment Coding, at Kaiser Permanente National Compliance Ethics and Integrity Office. And Nancy, that must take a lot to write out when you have to <laughs> put that on a form or something. <laughs> All right, second person, Christina Underhill. She's 25 years in health information management in both the ambulatory, ambulatory and acute environments. So she has her associate's degree in accounting and her health information technology degree from SBCC. She's an alum and is a reg registered health information technician and RHIT. Currently, she's a manager of the health information management department at El Camino Hospital, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. She oversees operations for the Mountain View and Los Gatos campuses. And last but not least, we have Sylvie White. Sylvie has her bachelor's and master's degrees in geography from Cal Berkeley and San Francisco State University. And interesting enough, she got her certified tumor registration certification in 2014. And after completing the SBCC, oh, she did that after she completed the SBCC CIM program at the same year. She did a practicum at UCSF and guess what, was subsequently hired, which is one of the best ways to get hired in a job, as a patient's, patient records abstractor. And she, can, she has continues to be employed there. So these are our panelists, and I'm looking forward to each of you sharing a little bit. And, we'll, and I'll, I'll call, your, call on you to speak, but of course, if you have something that you would like to interject, please don't hesitate to do so. I would like to start with Sylvie, since um, you are the last one that I just introduced, and I'd love to hear your synopsis of your education and career path, and what's your job now today? Um, all the panelists, if you please feel free to unmute yourselves. Well, thank you for having me here. Can you guys hear me okay? We're good. Awesome. So I probably came into this a little different. It's a second career for me. And uh, I started out life as a geographer, cartographer making maps. And then uh, I needed to change directions. And I had heard about the CIM program at Santa Barbara through a friend. 
and she had done the whole program online and I thought well that's handy I live in rural north Idaho and wouldn't that be nice to be able to do a whole thing online and so the Santa Barbara program fit my needs perfectly and I went through that program online until it came time to do the practicum and lucky for me my parents live in the Bay Area and I grew up there and so I was able to go down to Berkeley and stay at my mom's house for six weeks and I was going to come right back and start a career search here and while I was in my practicum I loved the organization I loved DCSF and I asked are there any openings here and my manager and Griffin was shocked I was interested because she just figured I'd go back to Idaho and she said sure we have openings and we'd love to have you here so that's kind of how I ended up there. And in the beginning, I still lived in Idaho, but was pretty much spending a lot of time in the Bay Area working on site. And then um, it just turned out that after a while, they had let me work from home. And I started working from home long before COVID started. So I've been working for UCSF from Idaho for several years now. And it's it's been a fantastic arrangement and I love the field and I love my organization. So I feel like things just kind of unfolded nicely in that regard for me. And I didn't have to go looking very far. It's a thousand miles away from where I live, but not very far from where my practicum was, let me put it that way. That's fantastic because I know, uh, you know, one of the questions has been, what about doing this job remotely? So you answered that right there. Thank you so much for answering that. Also, I, I wanted to mention that one of the students uh, contacted me earlier and wanted to know about what schools have bachelor's degree programs. So when you all are answering, if you want to interject anything related to that, that would be great. But we know that um, you know, Guire and, and Val would be also good contacts for, for that information too. But thank you so much. Um, how about you, Christina? Hi, Christina. everyone. Yeah. So I think I started my career before I started my education in health information. A little, little different uh, scenario, but um, when I graduated um, with an accounting degree, I just I don't know, it just didn't fit after a while when I decided to explore different um, avenues. And I ended up just taking a medical terminology class I and mean, it worked for me, I loved it. And I decided to uh, pursue that. And I ended up just um, working really from the bottom up. I was in healthcare for quite some time before I actually decided to go back and get my education and get my RHAT. I worked in ambulatory for many, many years. Um, at a local clinic and at Stanford. And then I just happened to come to El Camino um, on an assignment, a six week assignment, and I never left. I ended mm -hmm. up staying here for 15 years. Um, so, uh, and I ended up just pursuing my education that way. Had great mentors at El Camino Hospital that really supported my education, really wanted me to, um, just really take my experience and have that credential that matches. And so I went back to school through Santa Barbara City, great program. And I ended up getting my RHIT. And then um, just gradually over the years, I think I've done almost everything within HIM at El Camino Hospital, but I started as um, release of information, just a release of information clerk and worked my way up to being the manager of operations. Can you share some of the other jobs maybe that, um that you did so that people have an idea of, or students have an idea of what type of jobs are even available? Yeah, um, so I, for many years, I was a file clerk, um, the good old fashioned file clerk pulling charts um, in when we still had paper, but I've worked as a file clerk. I've worked um, as a release of information um, desk. I've been an analyst. Um, I've been a lead, I've been a supervisor, I've been a coordinator, um, all within health information. All of my years, um, my experience, the last 25 plus years has been, a, I would say about 10 years in ambulatory and the rest have been at the acute care at the hospital. Where technically, I'll be really honest with you, I felt like I learned most of my 
um, and really gained most of my experience has been at the hospital. I thought coming from a clinic, I, I knew a lot and I really didn't know that much until I came to the hospital. And gosh, I learned a lot more at an acute care environment. Thank you for sharing. Nancy, how about yourself? So I, um, I started out to be a dentist. I wanted to go into that field. And so I, I went to JC for a couple of years to get my, my undergraduate work out of the way and um, or my lower level work. And then I transferred uh, to UCLA as a junior. And um, at the time um, they had an HIM program as part of the School of Public Health. And I, I ultimately made the decision to change majors and went into health information management. So I started out really from the get-go as a health information management professional. And, um, but it, it, uh, it's been a fabulous career for me. Uh, I love everything about HIM. Um, I've done many, many different roles within health information management. Um, from ambulatory, working in a large um, Hispanic outpatient clinic to doing healthcare research. I actually lived in Santa Barbara for several years and worked for a healthcare research company. I also worked at Cottage Hospital for those of you who live in Santa Barbara uh, for a while. I've had my own consulting company doing consulting work for long-term care facilities and end-stage renal disease uh, facilities. I've uh, worked in acute care. Um, I worked for about 20 years uh, as part of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange. Uh, they have several hospitals. Now they're part of Providence uh, Healthcare System uh, as a, a manager uh, of their department and um, really switching to um, focusing primarily over time on coding. Um, I've presented a lot of coding education for the California Health Information Association over the years and um, became very active in, um, in both the California Health Information Association as well as, as AHIMA. But um, my education really started from there. And then I always wanted to go back to school and get my master's. Um, I waited until my son was finished with his college. And then he's like, what are you going back to school for? And I said, it's for me, because I am a lifelong learner and I wanted my master's degree. Um, so that's, uh, and I wanted, I didn't want to branch out into something new because I love HIM. So um, the College of St. Scholastica is where I got my master's degree. They also have an undergraduate uh, degree in HIM. And they also have a dual master's program where you go an extra year and you get a, a master's in health information management as well as um, health, anal I think healthcare analytics. Um, so something to, to consider if you're thinking about um, a, a post-bachelor degree. Great, thank you. And Nancy, while, while we've got you here on the screen, um, how does somebody get started in the field? I mean, you, you know, you started out in school at UCLA. What would you advise Santa Barbara City College students as far as how to get started on a job or, you know, there's so many different types of jobs it seems like you could get in different areas? There's a lot of opportunity in health information management. There's a lot of different directions you can go, whether you're really interested in data and um, data analytics, whether you love coding, whether you like release of information. My first love was release of information to the point that I was accepted to law school. I was going to be the legal, I wanted to be a healthcare attorney because I loved uh, release of information so much in dealing with subpoenas and um, that whole aspect of HIM. So there's, there's a lot of different directions you can go depending on your personal interests. Um, tumor registry is another great field that's related to health information management. So it really, it, it really can be very individualized for, for you um, depending on your interests. I think that networking is still important, whether it's through social media or in person. Um, I think getting involved in um, 
as much as you can, depending on where you live. I know a lot of you are um, taking classes online and are remote from the Santa Barbara area. Uh, but if you are in an area where you, if you're in California or in another state, they all have either state or local component associations that you can get involved in. And networking is really helpful, even as a student, to get your name known, get your name out there, because it's not just your technical skills that employers are looking for. It's also your soft skills, your people skills. Um, if, you, if this is a second career for you, all of those skills you learned in your prior careers can, can come into play as you are moving forward in your HIM career. Um, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have good people skills as well as good technical skills. Thank you. A lot of really solid information in there, Nancy. Thanks. What about you, Sylvie? You want to respond to that too? as far as how, how does one get started and, you know, in, in your area too? So I, um, I think it was my last or maybe second to last semester at Santa Barbara City College and Meryl Leventhal was my instructor at the time and, or she was the instructor of the class I was in at that time. And she recommended to get a mentor. And um, so I took her advice and asked her if she would be my mentor because I felt like she and I really, you know, clicked well in class and um, she said she would. And that was how I, um, she was the one who connected me to UCSF and suggested that I go for a practicum there, which really wasn't on my radar. I was thinking something more local to where I live. But like I mentioned previously, since I had family in the area, I said, sure, I'd love to do that. Um, but. I wanted to riff off what Nancy was saying too about the networking part of it. Um, that didn't come into play so much for me, but one of my colleagues at UCSF used the, um, the regional meetings as a place to network. And she showed up one day to, she, we'd been, she was also a CIM student and she knew me from, I think we did like a meetup at one point and so a few of us in the Bay Area had met and then she came to one of the regional meetings and because I recognized her, she ended up having lunch with us during the lunch break and got to know the UCSF team. And that was how she ended up getting a job at UCSF later. So I, I agree with you, Nancy. I think networking is so important. Um, but from my own personal experience, I'd say the mentoring aspect was how I got yeah brought into the fold. I saw somebody uh, noted in the chat that while you were talking that they said uh, they got their job through one of their regional meetings too, it sounds like. So networking, LinkedIn, LinkedIn too, online, right? Yeah. LinkedIn, um, you can go to um, Anahima, they have engaged and you can be posting things, you can follow conversations, you can get involved that way too through that type of social media. It, it really helps for people to get to know you, especially if you're new in the field, um, because it, I think it helps them to understand your people skills and how you would fit if they have an opening, because um, that's just as important in terms of, of thinking about hiring somebody is as the technical skills. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Christina, do you have some additions to the conversation here? Yeah, I would just I echo what Nancy and Sylvia are saying about um, networking. And then Nancy had mentioned volunteering. I know out on the CHIA website, sometimes there's volunteer opportunities for events. Um, I, you know, I encourage students to sign up for obviously both the HEMA and for CHIA, but there are um, some networking or events. The other thing I would suggest is sometimes just finding an entry level position in healthcare. Um, you know, now you're really having people feel and, and it really transcends, even though you might not have that healthcare background just yet. Um, as a manager that hires, I am looking for someone that has, you know, people skills and skills that maybe to correlate to something that we do in the healthcare environment, not necessarily specific to what we're doing, but great people skills, great customer service, um, 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, can tell in their resumes that they, you know, they are quick learners. They've progressed, you know, throughout their job into different um, titles or positions. So I always think about hiring people. I like a well-rounded individual. I never want someone who has, you know, the best skill set, but no people skills or vice versa. I kind of want a little bit of everything. And so um, sometimes just going for an entry-level position, I know we have many, not now, but we have many at El Camino where people just come in and they're just, um, you know, they're scanning. They're just scanning and getting their foot in the door. And a lot of those particular positions, um, they're able to progress on and kind of go through a step program where they get to where they want to, either within the Mm -hmm. department or within the organization. Transferable skills, really important to be gaining transferable skills in in all of your jobs, which is what you do just naturally when you have a job. So thank you for bringing up the customer service aspect too and just sort of the whole whole package, not just the narrow focus. Christina, what do you do uh, or what does your day look like? Like, what do you do in your job? Um, well, let's see. <laughs> I do a lot, but I say the core. So I'm manager of operations. And in my department, we cover everything from birth recording to analyzing charts for a complete record to release of information, transcription, position suspension. Um, we're basically the whole package here. Uh, we take a lot of customer phone calls as well. So my, my core role is to make sure that operations go smoothly, that we are hitting our turnaround times, we're meeting any type of regulatory requirements, as well as you know best practice standards in the department. And um, that's between our two hospitals, as well as we have staff up in our um, clinical units as well. Um, in addition to that, we have partnered with local clinics in the area to become more of a network than just a hospital. So we are um, handling their release of information as well as um, their scanning and a lot of their record management. So the day is really busy, but sometimes, you know, and I don't know how Nancy and Sylvie feel, but sometimes you go into your day thinking I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily happen. You're fielding phone calls, putting out fires, and just dealing with a lot of, um, you know, in the moment type issues, um, as well as not just from a patient care perspective, but also for staffing. Thank you. Sylvie, can you speak specifically to um, the cancer registry type work? Sure. Um, You mean like what my typical day is? Yep. Yep. So pretty much the opposite of what you just described. Mine is pretty straightforward every day. Um, I started my job when I was commuting in the Bay Area, and so I got into the habit of getting to the office really, really early, and to this day, I still do it, even though my commute is 10 steps away from my living room. Um, It's, I, I usually start my day at seven, and I just pretty much jump right into abstracting. Um, right now, we Every, well, every few months, once a year, every few months, I'm not sure how to describe the timing, but we do follow up and just do like an intense round of follow up that might last a couple of months. And that's all we do all day. But when we're not doing follow up, I'm doing abstracting. And when I was actually working on site at the hospital, I would sometimes I'd go to tumor board meetings and that was always really cool. Um, And other than that, my day is pretty straightforward. I just, I abstract all day long. And for those of us who don't know what abstracting is, can you give us a little clue? Sure. So um, we take the medical record for a cancer case, a, a tumor with, or a patient with a cancer tumor, and we boil down all the information from the diagnosis and workup and diagnosis and treatment and try and just fit it onto a single page. So um, we're looking at all the scans and blood work and labs a patient may have had, what type of diagnosis they have, if it was a biopsy or you know, non-tissue diagnosis in some cases, then all the um, 
all the treatment recommendations that the um, medical providers offer, medical oncologists, the surgeons, the radiation oncologists, and try and really just distill it down to just the facts. And a lot of that is text-based, but we also do quite a bit of coding. So, um, you know, things like the tumor size or uh, staging a case, AJCC staging, um, EOD staging, all those little numbers in boxes, as I like to say. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't know, am I missing anything? I think that kind of sums up abstracting. So basically I do that all day long. I just read medical records and put numbers in boxes and text in fields and try and tell a whole story very, very succinctly and accurately. Fantastic. Nancy, you want to share what you do every day or what, what your day looks like? You're in compliance, so that would look very different, I would guess. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm in compliance, but what my team does is basically they do audits for Kaiser. So we, I'm responsible for all of the regions of Kaiser. So Maryland, Virginia, Georgia, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Hawaii, California. Um, and we make sure because we have a Medicare Advantage plan and a Affordable Care Act plan for risk adjustment as well as Medicaid. So as part of the Kaiser Foundation health plan and hospitals, it's important that we comply with all of the regulations, not only related to risk adjustment itself, but all of the coding. So when Sylvie's talking about looking at charts, that's what my team does. That's one of the things we're responsible for. We make sure if we're, if we're coding cancer to get reimbursed through risk adjustment models, that that diagnosis is accurate. It's, it's current his, cancer, not history of cancer, um, that type of thing. So we, we look at, um, things through a risk adjustment payment methodology lens, but it's still at the end of the day, we're looking at does the documentation support the diagnosis? Um, and so I attend lots and lots of meetings all day long is, is what my, my primary responsibility is and, and guiding my team when they're not quite sure on a, on a coding guideline or something of that nature. Thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what character traits, Nancy, do you think are really important for students to have to be in, in this industry? I think that um, what comes top of mind is integrity and um, being ethical, I think, are, are very important. I think that um, whatever organization that you're thinking of becoming an employee of, it's really important that your values mirror those of the organization that you're going to work for. Um, diversity is very, very important. Um, that's a value that you wanna be uh, being able to exhibit as, as one of your character traits. And that, that means um, making sure that you don't have sort of an unconscious bias um, that can be uh, hindering your career path. Um, those are the things I'm looking for, particularly honesty, being ethical, having integrity, um, we, and, and diversity. I have a very diverse staff. I love it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Great. Christina, you're a hiring manager too, so do you have some Thoughts on that? Um, yeah, when I hire and or when I retain staff, I feel like caring is half the battle. Like if you care about your job, you care about the end result, you care about your patient on the phone, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's really 50% of the job. The other part is having, being honest, being ethical, doing the right thing, really supporting the mission uh, statement of the hospital and their vision. Um, and treating everyone with respect. Here at the hospital, we have a big uh, uh, patient relation program called We Care, and we're really big on the patient experience, um, whether it's calling medical records or making an appointment or coming into the ED, that everyone is treated um, like a person, 
not just a, a patient mm -hmm. in the bed. We really provide that level of respect to them and, and really connect with them and engage with them, as well as each other, our colleagues as well. So um, in this day and age, people are consumers. They can pick any healthcare organization usually they want to go to. And why are they going to pick my hospital versus another hospital in the Bay Area? And really the difference um, comes to that level of patient engagement and relationship. So um, it's a big push for that everywhere, whether I don't have direct patient care, but I do interact with patients. And so that is my kind of patient care experience that I need to support. And I think need to make sure that the patient walks away with a good feeling of my organization. Excellent. Great. I know I noticed in the chat that there's a lot of questions about how can I find a job? Where can I find a job? And why are or an internship. And Guire just put some information in the chat. And you can reach out to any of us who um, are who work in the Career Center and Guire in the academic counseling to get some help with that. Shauna as well, we're all here to help you. And I think you've got some great networking people right here on our panel. So definitely reach out to panelists if they, are you all willing to to connect with students at some mm -hmm. point. If, yeah, that'd be great. And uh, when I do my follow-up email, or if you wanna put your email in the chat, I'll definitely provide your emails if you're okay with that. Um, and then of course, it sounds like the local organizations are great to, to uh, connect with for networking. Um, Sylvia, we're gonna take a little bit different tack before we go to student questions. Um, what advice do you have for students who are pursuing an education to work in this profession? Um, you know, I, I had a great experience at Santa Barbara City College, and that was a really great fit for me. Um, you never really stop learning. You have to keep on top of it. And, you know, I, you know, sometimes I'll go on, there's a, the, what's it called? Seer, Seer Sync, S-I-N-Q. And that's a place where you go and ask a bunch of questions about um, specific histology or things that are hard to figure out just following the rules of staging and coding. And I like to go on there just to see what's new. It's like, you know, the headlines of, of, of new developments in histology, I, I guess you could say. Um, but I, I'm not sure how to answer your question more specifically than I, I had a great experience with Santa Barbara City College and I don't know right now what I would do differently or add to that. I haven't really kept up on what it's like in the world uh, cancer management education. It's been a few years since I've done it. Sorry. I, I think what you shared was, was great. So super <laughs> useful, wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to questions because we have a lot of questions and Christina McGuire is uh, taking questions in the chat. So she's gonna come on right now and pose some questions and maybe one of you can just choose to answer whichever you think is related to you the most perhaps. Christina McGuire. Um, um, thank you all for being here again. I really appreciate all the information. So um, Christina asked if they'll, um, I will be going into my practicum internship very soon. Would it be possible to find one online, which I think we did touch on and Guire did mention that, you know, she would uh, definitely speak to students about that. Um, also, what is the best way to get your foot in the door as an RHIT if your practic practicum is non-traditional, virtual and not acute care due to COVID? Well, it depends on what your practicum involved and what you're interested in, I would think. Okay. Great. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next question. This one's from Julie. As a CTR and a PT records abstractor, what does your typical week, month look like for you? There seems to be so many jobs and responsibilities outside of coding and abstracting. Is that one for Sylvie? Yes. Oh, um, 
<laughs> Sorry, I, I um, mostly my week is just abstracting. And then when we do the big follow up push, which will last a couple months at a time, sometimes um, my week is really pretty much the same day after day. And as someone who loves routine, I really enjoy that. I don't like having to, I don't like being pulled in a lot of different directions or answering phone calls and going to meetings um, all day long. So for me, just sitting there and abstracting day in, day out is, is kind of a typical and perfect week. I, um, I find the case is so interesting. I don't get bored doing the same thing. It's a routine, but it's also it has a lot of variety with, built into it. Did that answer the question? I think so. Thank you, Sylvie. Uh, for Nancy, suggestions for a current Kaiser employee, employee, what jobs to look out for? Well, it kind of depends on what you're interested in. Um, Kaiser has, they have an electronic health record, as you may know. And so um, there's a lot of opportunity both uh, and IT connected to um, our EPIC electronic health record, we call it Health Connect. Uh, there's also entry-level positions um, in uh, coding and HIM. Um, it just depends on what it is that you really are interested in, but there's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, if you are interested in coding, for example, it's important that you get your initial certification. I think that would be a CCA. Um, at a minimum, or um, and then go from there. Um, they they have tests you can take to test into positions that are um, union positions with our our labor partners as well. Um, if you want are interested more in a non traditional role, then I would consider things um, perhaps in a, in the compliance space is another way that you can utilize your health information background. They look to us a lot, and I, I attend a lot of meetings, but a lot of it has to do with providing advice related to health information management topics. Um, writing policies that have to do with health information management is a lot of what I do as well, not just um, the coding aspect, although that's a very important piece of it. But getting in at the ground level, again, it's those people skills that you can demonstrate. It's being able to apply um, life experiences that, that you can um, equate to a, a job opportunity that you're looking at. Thank Does you. Does that help answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was great. Thank you, Nancy. And if, any, if this was your question, feel free to um, unmute as well. Um, we also have a question from Tara. She was wondering if employers favor the certificate AHIMA or AAPC. I'm biased. I'm on the board <laughs> of directors for AHIMA. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, so this is Nancy's perspective. AHIMA is more geared towards your hospital acute care um, and hospital ambulatory settings of care. AAPC is m generally more geared towards professional services coding. So it kind of depends, although AHIMA does both, the AAPC is, is more geared towards that. So it kind of depends on what you're interested in, what sort of um, setting of care you want to work in, um, that's, the, again, that's my perspective. That might be my bias. I don't know if we have anybody on the call that's a member of AAPC. Sylvia or Christina, do you have comments about that to refute Nancy's bias? <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with Nancy. I mean, when I'm looking at a, 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 an employment of possible employment. I mean, obviously, you know, when it says a HEMA, it catches my eye more only because I am also more on the HIT side than I am on the coding side. Um, but I, I would agree. And again, you know, um, sometimes just getting a position, you don't necessarily have to have a credential for having some background showing that you're a current student also helps to, I look at that when I take 
uh, new hires on. But they're, I could see that they're uh, invested and engaged and that this is going to be a long-term career for them. Um, so I'm looking at that as well. Thank you, Christina. Appreciate that. Um, this kind of goes along the same lines, but as, but does the group find that dual certification is a benefit towards career? He who does with the most certifications wins. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dual certifications. Um, you mean like both a CCS and a CPC? Or are you talking about an RHIT or an RHIA in a CCS or if if Thomas Golden is still is still here on the call this would be his question if you want to put the what you mean in the chat oh I I asked just curious because I am CPC chasing RHIT okay so what setting of care are you hoping to work in do you want to work for a large physician group practice um, you know, for those of you who may not know, Kaiser is, is kind of like a consortium. The Permanente Medical Groups are separate and distinct from Kaiser Foundation Health Plan and Hospitals. So, um, and they hire CPCs all the time and would, would be interested in somebody with an, a CPC and an RHIT combination, for example. I'd, li I'd like to interject here, um, Christina, because there's somebody that asked a question that I run into too when I'm working with students it, and the students said, I see some Kaiser openings for coding. However, they require three years experience. How does someone get hired that has no experience in coding? Mm -hmm. But yep. it, yeah, so that, that seems to be a common challenge. It's hard. When I, was a when I worked in the hospital, I would specifically hire students that had just gotten out of school. They had to pass their coding certification test and I would hire them on a three month probationary period and let them, you know, and mentor them. Um, but you have to find people that are willing to do that. It's not always easy. Sometimes the um, uh, coding vendors are willing to hire new grads because they have a whole sort of mentorship program that they'll put you through um, as part of that. And you can find out about that through, um, if you, especially if you attend um, conferences and things, a lot of times the vendors are there and they're always looking for new people. And, and if they have a mentorship type of program for new grads, that might be a way to kind of get your foot in the door and get that experience. Um, that people are looking for. Thank you, Nancy. That um, was the theme, Jana. Thank you for bringing that up. There were a few questions asking about how do I get my foot in the door for entry level positions. Um, Sylvia, Sylvia, or Christina, do you have any advice on that? I know that uh, a friend of mine who was the one who introduced me to the Santa Barbara City College program, she started out doing follow-up for a hospital. And I know that's not exactly what you're talking about, but within the uh, abstracting realm, she started doing follow-up before she had her CTR and that gave her enough experience that when it came time to actually go into abstracting, she had already had enough experience that it helped her um, but I don't know if that's exactly in with the other elements you guys were talking about with the coding, but that, you know, maybe generalizing that, trying to find something that isn't exactly what you want to do, but on the way there, a stepping stone, so to speak. Yeah, I think I, you're right, Sylvie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I saw, I haven't really been following the chat, but I did see someone ask what was the website that I had, um, this is an aside, not to, not related to the question I just answered, but someone asked what I had, the website I had mentioned earlier is Seer Sync. It's S-E-E-R-S-I-N-Q. I don't know if the person who asked that was still online, but I hope that helps clarify. Oh, hi, Julie, I see your chat, yes. I'm glad, 
Glad that helped. Christina, do you have some comments too? Christina Underhill? Well, I think um, just exactly what Nancy and Sylvie had said before, I would agree with. Are all of you familiar with the AHIMA podcasts as well? They're free and they're like little, well, they're podcasts and you can listen to all kinds of different topics of the day. Um, they can be really interesting, um, but they might perk your interest and help keep you informed about all kinds of things going on in HIM, things like patient, um, you know, universal patient identification, uh, information governance, is is a hot one things that have to do with telehealth i know that you didn't ask about covid today specifically but covid has you know rocked our worlds and um even just you know how do you how do you document people coming in for telehealth visits for phone visits for video visits for e-chats how do you code it how do you get consent for it it's um it's been a wild, crazy ride. And for those of you who want to know, all of my staff are remote. I live in Spokane. I spend lots of time in North Idaho, Sylvie. I was just going to say Spokane's my closest airport. We're practically neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hayden Lake. I'm up, I'm um, north. I'm up, up, up in the Sandpoint area. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I also spend time in California, hence the background but um everybody's remote and um we get together well eventually we'll get together again but we usually get together quarterly um so that we get that in-person time but um but we all work remotely so remote it, remote can work if you want it to thank you for bringing up the COVID aspect that was one of my questions i was going to pose that i kind of skipped over so thanks for bringing it up and i see that guire put the ehima podcast link in the chat so you can see that jan i saw someone asked a question about how to do uh, about mentoring and i i think that ncra the national cancer registrars association has a, a mentor program i I can't say any more about it than that, but that would be a place to look for that, or maybe through the faculty in your program. Great. I just put that in the chat. I think CHIA has um, a mentor. We have a mentor program as well, and whatever state you may be personally living in, the state association may well have a mentor program as well that you can reach out to. Um, People in the, in health information management and human registry, we we tend to be a um, a really nice bunch of people, and and we love to volunteer and we love to support each other. Um, There's so many good tips that all of you have shared that I think will help empower anybody who is trying to look for work in the field, especially now when it's COVID and you know, unusual times for job searching. And uh, really appreciate what you've had to share. Are there any last minute comments you'd like to leave with our students? I'll start with you, Sylvie. Um, I, I, I just love this field. I love everything about it. And I'm hoping that having heard us speak today has encouraged people to continue on this path. It's, um, it's really been for me a great, I think one of the questions you had sent me earlier that maybe didn't, I didn't answer, didn't get asked was, you know, what kind of character traits. And I know I'm very attentive to detail and it was a long path through my life to find a, a career that really emphasized that and you know o OCD suddenly isn't a criticism it's my how I get paid so um, I encourage everyone to continue on and um, I, I hope I hope this was inf informative as well as inspiring to people and um, I just I'm, thank you for including me in it thank you 
How about you, Christina? I agree with Sylvie. I honestly, I, I'm very busy. I do a lot of work in my career, career, but I love every day. I actually love what I do, love the people I interact with. It's definitely, you know, a good fit for me. And I'm a huge supporter of the Santa Barbara program because I went through it. I know how difficult it is to find a practicum location. So I'll throw it out there. I don't know there's a lot of people out here, but we do take students. It, so I have taken a lot of Santa Barbara students for the practicum for their RHIT. So if someone is interested, I would uh, encourage you to work with your program director and your teacher, and then they would reach out to me to see if there's um, if we can do placement at the hospital. But I've taken many, many students over my time here at El Camino. So feel free to reach out. Same with UCSF. We've done, we've had a lot of practicum students there. I'm not in charge of it. It would be my manager um, who would who you would reach out to, but I wanted to include uh, UCSF in people's mind when you're thinking of the practicum. If you yeah. don't mind putting your, think, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, if you don't mind putting your email in the chat, that would be really helpful. We have some students who are asking for your, whatever your contact is. Um, Nancy, you were gonna say something? I was just going to say, um, Diane Primo, I think, is the HIM director for UCSF. Um, and so she might be a good contact as well if you're looking for um, HIM um, versus um, tumor registry. Great. I, I didn't recognize and, They're definitely not in our area. UCSF's a big organization. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. Great. Um, Nancy, final words? <laughs> I would just encourage all of you to um, continue to pursue your career in health information technology, uh, HIM or CIM. I think they're all great fields. They have a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of changes taking place in uh, the industry today. And I can tell you for health information, uh, there's nothing constant but change. Um, and we are always at the forefront, whether it has to do with dealing with COVID, um, dealing with um, the Cures Act and tr price transparency, dealing with um, new ways to, to code, um, you know, morphology and histology, his, you know, histological samples or whatever it is. It's, there's so many different aspects that you can get involved in that will pique your interest. Um, it, it's just a, it's a great field. I can't say enough about it. Thank you uh, to each one of you. Just so fabulous to have the straight up information from people who are doing the work. It just takes a lot of mystery out of connecting and moving forward with uh, careers and, and jobs. So I really appreciate everything that each one of you shared today. Now, I know we didn't get to some questions. Some of them were quite specific. So if you want to reach out to any of us about your specific question, we'd be happy to follow up with you and help you figure out where to get that question if we don't answer it ourselves, okay? So you have our information, it's in the chat. I see that, um, some of you have put your, uh, Guire's put your email in, Sylvie has, and, uh, and so on. So please contact me, Christina, Sylvie, Nancy, and Val, and then Christina McGuire as well in our department. So thanks again. It was great to have all of you on with us today. And I will be sending a follow-up email to all of you with some of the information that we got today, okay? And I'll always